Uh, thank you once again and welcome to this uh, nightly presentation where we are going through the uh, the Jewish uh, wedding model. And uh, I thank the Lord for the information that uh, he has been able to give us um, so far. And I believe that uh, we are being benefited by the things that we are learning. And uh, much of it is uh, about uh, the thematic connections uh, of the literal wedding institution or the marriage institution and uh, the spiritual aspect and how the marriage institution connects with the plan of redemption. And so um, I know that we have a ground to cover and uh, like us to pray and then uh, enter fully into this session. And so I uh, will bow down for a word of prayer. We pray. Our Heavenly Father, all the grace and the energy and the understanding cometh from thee. And so, Lord, we want to understand thy will and how our marriage, uh, our marriage is really reveals the plan of redemption and this uh, connection that they have. And so help us to realize the institutions that you have called us in, how they will help us even prepare for the kingdom. This is my prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I, I continue thanking the Lord because uh, I understand that uh, the Lord is in the business of uh, saving his people. And uh, for those who seek him in truth and in spirit, he will never cast them aside. And so uh, I just want to encourage us that uh, even though things may sound and seem like that uh, we have fallen off the cliff, we still have Jesus Christ who is the author and um, finisher of our faith and uh, he will not leave us alone. But um, as we continue learning the things, he will uh, help us to understand his will more and uh, draw closer to him. And so tonight um, we are covering a session are called uh, the wise or the foolish. And uh, yesterday, uh, I mean in the previous uh, presentation, uh, the two presentation, we looked at um, um, the three stages before the marriage consummation and we had the Shiduhin, which is the courtship. And then we had uh, the Erosin, which is the engagement, and then we have the swim, which is the, uh, uh, um, the, the actual marriage. And we saw that uh, in, uh, in uh, Shiduhin, there was the matchmaking where the father of uh, the bridegroom was involved fully in matchmaking, in uh, being able to help uh, the son have a companion that uh, will befit him and will befit the family because the Jewish type of marriage model was that uh, it was not only two individuals coming together to be married, but it was a family affair. It was a community affair in that two families were coming together and to be intertwined, to be one and live harmoniously, both uh, the, the family of uh, the lady and the family of uh, the man. And we saw that in this uh, Shiduhin, this is the courtship, Jesus Christ, the father looked for a bride for his son, Jesus Christ, and the humanity, uh, uh, the human race became the wife of his son and the father approved of it and then sent the son to, uh, uh, to redeem this uh, lady or the church or the human family that had been sold and was in reproach of sin. And so that is the part of the Shuduhin, that is the, uh, the courtship, that is the matchmaking. And then we had the Erusin, which is the engagement, which is the engagement. And uh, we found out that uh, in the Erusin, um, actually, it was the engagement where um, the bridegroom paid the price uh, for the bride. The bridegroom paid the price for the bride. That is um, the dowry. And on top of the dowry, the 
bridegroom was able to pay what we call the matan, which are the gifts. And so in the thematic connections with the plan of redemption, we find that uh, Christ paid um, the, the, the dowry at uh, Calvary with, with his own life, where actually instead of bulls and goats and uh, sheep being presented, actually Christ gave his life. And you find that normally, it, and more so in an African setup, you find that uh, when uh, a man is going to marry a lady, he takes to the lady's place uh, some bulls, some sheep, and some goats. But um, these are the offerings that were brought into the sanctuary for an atonement or to redeem. But um, Christ was able to give his own life, and that is the dowry. And then the matan, which are the gifts where um, the man is appreciating the mother of the lady and the father of the lady for raising up a, 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 a wife for him. And then these are the gifts. Uh, we, we find that um, the dowry upon the day of the consummation of the marriage, the dowry could be returned to the bridegroom so that it may help them start a life with this wife. But the matan was the gifts that uh, the bridegroom gave and they were not returned, but it was an appreciation which was used by the family and even to keep the lady comfortable at her home so that she may not be attracted to another man and all that. And we find that uh, I was stating that um, Jesus Christ paid the dowry with his life but also he gave them a turn, which are the gifts. And we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enables us to live comfortably overcoming sin as we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so um, that was the first presentation. And in the second presentation, we saw that the bet uh, betrothal time, which is actually the 12 months after paying the dowry and the gifts, which are the matan, the bridegroom went to his home and then he had to come after 12 months or one year to take the bridegroom home we find that jesus christ went to heaven and there's this gap until the second coming when he will come to take the bride home but we saw that in this betrothal time the man had to go back home and prepare a place for this lady and even set up something that the lady will be doing to help up the family so that uh, the family may not have that uh, burden uh, of uh, uh, two people living together and raising up something for subsistence. And so the man went and prepared something for the lady. And if it were trade, he set up, he tried some few things that could match up what the lady could do. While the lady herself, when she was at her home, she was also learning of the things that she can do to please the wife, his, the, the husband, the likings, how to be able to be hospitable, how to be able to be welcoming, how to be able to be the woman in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, whose husband was praised in the gates because of this wife that he had. And so you find that um, um, she had a part to prepare and the man had a part to prepare so that when they come together, it will not be a burden or it will not be something that will end up in chaos, quarreling, abuses, separation and divorce. Christ never meant that the, that, that the marriage institution should be broken. He says that I hate divorce, I hate divorce. Uh, I don't like how you deal violently with the wife of the youth. And so when he was establishing the marriage institution, he never intended that there be separation and divorce. And when uh, he is entering into the marriage with the church, there will be no separation or divorce. They will be united forevermore. And so we find that Christ also, as he is the bridegroom, after he had paid the dowry and the gifts went to heaven. And in John chapter 14, we found out that he went to prepare a place for us so that wherever he is, that he may come. We saw that when he comes back, we go for a honeymoon. And then when we go to a honeymoon, when the man married the woman, they did not go to a war. They were protected by the father and um, 
if the enemy could come to attack them, the father would uh, actually uh, uh, be able to shield them from the enemy. And so uh, they were in a sort of a honeymoon and the man did not go to war, the lady did not go uh, outside and they just enjoyed their marriage. So when Christ comes, we go to heaven for a thousand years and we don't go to war. And even when Satan comes, when the new earth and the new heavens is being set, uh, when the, uh, the, the, the new Jerusalem is down here on earth, and Satan tries to attack the city, the fire from God will protect the sun and the, that is the, the, the sun and uh, the church or the, the bridegroom and the, the bride so that the earth will be cleansed. So we enter into the session of today where I'm dealing with um, uh, the wise or the foolish. And uh, this is something that uh, I'll try just to tackle it more spiritually because uh, uh, if we understand this better, these thematic connections between the literal wedding, uh, the literal um, uh, marriage and uh, the connections there, then uh, we shall be able uh, to be able to understand how we shall conduct our marriage. Uh, as I go into this presentation, I said this and I'll keep saying it, that uh, if we can understand the marriage institution better, then we will even understand the redemption plan better. And then how we deal with our spouses in courtship, engagement in marriage shows if we are ready for redemption. Because uh, 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 marriage is an forced test of heaven and it's a reflection or it is um, what we may call um, a specimen of uh, the redemption plan. So I'd like to share my screen somehow. As a, a bride, as a bride, um, we as a church and the lady that is going to be married, are we fulfilling the requirements that is expected of us as the bride? Are we wise virgins? who are waiting to be married, or uh, are we not wise, we are fools? Now, uh, I, before I go even in the book of Matthew chapter 25 fully, I'd like to put something on the screen. In this, uh, uh, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 25, I want us to notice something connected to the parable of the wise and the foolish virgin is uh, the issue of uh, the talents. Now, I'll go direct to that Matthew chapter 25, start in the middle and come back again. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and treated, traded with the same, and made them over five talents. And likewise, he that had two, or received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord's servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so connected with the wise and the foolish is the parable of the talents that uh, this bride is given the talents and the man has to invest in the wife. Now, if you go to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 31, Sorry for that. If you go to the book of Proverbs 31, we have a man and we have the wife. And this man invests in this lady. And this lady, you find that uh, she takes what the man has given unto him, unto her. Uh, she takes what the man has given unto her and she multiplies. She is able to be uh, uh, a woman who can do embroidery, a woman who can have a kitchen garden, a woman who can do 
several things as they are named in the book of Proverbs. And so a man has to invest in the way. You know, we, we find so many problems in the marriage relationship because most of the marriage that we are having are made up of unconverted people. And so you find that um, the man has his own finances, the woman has her own finances, and there is no revelation of anything in that marriage institution. The husband doesn't know what the wife gets. The wife doesn't know what um, uh, the husband gets. But in the ideal setup of Proverbs chapter 31, we find that this man is investing in this lady, and this lady is able to reproduce so that she's not buying clothes for the children, She's not buying curtains and um, uh, the clothes to spread on the table. Um, she is making all of this and she dresses the children warmly. She finds a garden and buys it. And she is doing all sorts of these things because she he has a man who is behind her and who is leading out things. And she is a sure companion. She is a sure helpmate. Sometimes when we read that term, God created Adam and gave him a help meet. We don't understand this issue so much because um, with the wealth that the Lord had given to Adam, he gave him a help meet to be able to help him be able to maintain that uh, an empire. It is when Eve wandered away from Adam that sin came. It is also when women leave from being a helpmeet to the husband that sin comes in. And we are not going to blame women alone, the wives, but there are men who are not investing in their women. So it forces the women to go out and seek for how they can subsist in the family. And then when they go outside there, you find that... Uh, they get a lot of temptation. They come back to the house when they are worried. They can't serve better the husband. And then the husband is demanding some things from this wife, which the wife cannot fulfill because he is the problem. He is not the one. Uh, he, is, uh, he is the one who never took time to invest in this lady so that she may not go outside and be worried. There is what we call the sphere of a man and the sphere of a woman. We are told that the sphere of um, a woman is in the homestead. She is a home missionary where she will wait for the husband who is a brother and welcome him home, uh, warmly give him uh, 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 the food and provide an environment where actually when the man comes from his sphere, which is outside, which is the field, uh, when he finds a woman who is um, uh, uh, spiritual enough and who understands her sphere well, all the problems and the heartaches he could have fair, he could have enc uh, encountered in the field, when he comes back home and he is having this goodly wife, all the troubles will remain outside the gates. And we can go into uh, uh, into inspiration and SOP that uh, talks about the sphere of a man and the sphere of. Uh, 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 a woman that um, woman was not meant for difficult ta tasks that they go outside and face them. I know somebody will raise, sometimes people raise this point, you know, we are living under hard, hard economies and then, uh, you know, a woman has to bring in something and a man has to bring something in and then uh, we can be able to bring together on the table and help each other. I tell you, you are working on your own plan. You are not working on the plan of God. Even after endurance of sin, the Lord tells Eve, thy desire shall be upon thy husband. Not thy desire in a wrong way, but actually he tells the man, out of the ground you shall till, out of the sweat of thy brow. He, the Lord himself is telling the man. So man is meant for the hardships of the field, but the woman, she is a home missionary where the husband has to invest in her and she has to see how to reproduce that within the home atmosphere without jostling for powers in the offices and in this and in that. And then she comes back home and she's tired. She cannot 
fulfill the marital obligations. And then you find that this family is missing happiness. This family is missing togetherness. This family is missing union. This family cannot be knit as one fabric or cannot be as one flesh. And so connected to the parable of the wise and the foolish are talents. And the bridegroom, what he sees in the woman, he sees uh, possibilities. He sees some, um, what can I say? Uh, uh, um, he sees what this woman can do. I'm missing the word, but uh, if I, I, I regain it, it will be good. Potential, potential. Potential, thank you so much, uh, Sister Veronica. He sees the potential of this lady and invest in them. So Christ, as he gives the parable of the wise and the foolish, he connects it with the talent and gives to the bride one, two talents, another five talents, and another one. So you give according to the capability. Don't load over your wife so many things when she doesn't have the potential and the capability. Look at her strength as Jesus Christ gives the gifts to his church in various measure. We are told that uh, the Lord gives the gifts according to the, to the grace and according to the measure. That is the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and the book of Romans chapter 5. And so this husband looks at the wife and says, oh, my wife can do this better and better. How can I simplify her job? How can I invest this? My wife is a, a, a person who understands how to cook. I'll be able to invest in cookery so that she may make sweet cakes. She may make um, good food. And if others can be sold, they can be sold so that we get some earning. So this woman you are looking into her, the capabilities that she has, she is a good uh, symmetry. Okay, I'll invest in machines so that uh, she doesn't have a hard time in sewing and all that stuff. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. So Christ as the bridegroom sees the potentials and sees the capability of the, the bride, which is the church, and gives the gifts and the talent and invest in this church so that uh, they may be used for salvation, not only for the family, but even for others which are in darkness. So a good man invests in the wife, and the wife is able to use this talent not only for the salvation of the family, but she can expand on this talent so that it meets the third angel's requirement. Because we are living in the day of atonement, the talents that we have and the capabilities and the potentials that we have are to bring people into the kingdom. Because in the book, same book of Matthew chapter 25, and I, I, I'm, I'm doing this verbatim, or paraphrasing it because I understand that we have gone in the book of, through the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25. When Christ is coming now, the second coming, so that he may pick the bride, which is the church, he is having the goats on the left uh, and the sheep on the right. And uh, you look at uh, how he selects the goats and the sheep, how he puts one on the left and one on the right. And then he says, I was unhungered and you used your talent to give me food. I was naked and you used your talent to clothe me. I was a prisoner and you used your talent to free me up. Enter into the blessedness of the Lord. And on the left, he said that I was this and you never attended to me. I was this and you never attended me. And uh, these people had been given talents because they, they, they showed the potential, but never came to use their potential well. So even women and the wives which are married, it is not good for your husband to take these pains to invest in you, and all you do is you are cumbering the ground. Everything you touch is not happening, or you just decide to be lazy and you decide not to be cooperative in any way. And so uh, I believe that this parable of the wise and the foolish, uh, actually the thematic connections with the plan of redemption is so vivid that we cannot miss it. Then uh, the reign of the heavens shall be compared to 10 maidens who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. And we, we were looking at this in the second presentation that um, it is essential for the bride to take that extra oil. 
not only um, you have to say, okay, my husband has invested in me this, now I'll just send her upon this only. No, expand your sphere, take that extra oil so that uh, even your master, when he looks at you, he may say that uh, this is a servant giving meat in due season to his people. And uh, the husband can say, hey, God blessed me with a wife. And so, and five were them of were, and five of them were wise and five foolish. Psalms 118, 98 to 100, you, your commands make me wiser than my enemies. For it is ever before me, I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your witness and my study, I understand more than the age, for I have observed your orders. Now, we are told that uh, the husband is the priest of the home. But as much as the husband is the priest of the home, the wife, we are told that uh, the, the, the homestead, uh, I mean, um, uh, the homestead can belong to a husband, but the house belongs to a wife. And the people who are under the roof of the house are the husband and the children, if God blesses you with the children. And the wife has to use her talents not only to rely on the husband to be the spiritual leader, but also she must understand the upbringing of the children, what really uh, will uh, what will really please the husband and so on. And uh, she should work on improving. And how does she work on this? By being daily connected to our heavenly father. The wife can excel more in her sphere and not um, uh, be just a person who uh, cumbereth the ground. And so uh, God is looking unto us as a church. Will we take the extra oil? Will we go more than what people expect of us? And also as uh, a wife, will you go just more than what the husband thinks of you? Will you be a blessing to uh, the, the family. And so <clears throat> they took the oil for the lamb. And uh, we know that the oil comes from um, uh, um, the, the olive trees. And uh, what are the olive tree, what does the olive tree contain? It contains the fruit, which actually produces the fruit, uh, the fruit which produces the oil, I mean. And so uh, um, as a wife, you are also to have the spiritual gifts. You are also to reproduce the fruit of the spirit in your life. And uh, where your husband is weak, also you should provide uh, the strength that is needed in the family. And so we see that um, um, blessed is this woman that actually understands her role. Blessed is this woman who will make the husband a delight. Now, you will say that uh, maybe I'm dwelling on the side of uh, the wife so much, but uh, the wife of the man, he has to understand that uh, he is standing in the stead of Christ. And this, um, we go to the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such a thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. <clears throat> For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and curses it, even as the Lord, the, uh, the uh, even as the Lord, the church, for we are members of the body of his flesh and of his bones. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too will be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular, in particular, so love his wife even, wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is the issue of being the wise and the foolish in that uh, as the man stands in the place of Christ in marital relation, the wife has to stand in the part of the church. And so everyone should be fulfilling the obligations that um, uh, the, 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 the marriage institution uh, 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 was meant for, for them. And in Proverbs chapter, uh, in the book of Proverbs, we find uh, in Proverbs, I'm looking for the woman uh, really destroys her own house. And so there is um, the book of Proverbs. Chapter 14, verses 1. Book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verses 1. Every wise woman <clears throat> buildeth her house, but uh, the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. And uh, the issue of a wise woman building her house but the foolish one plucking it down with her hands. In connection with Matthew chapter 25, that uh, they were given the talents. When uh, you go to Ecclesiastes, we are told, chapter 9, verse 10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So a wise woman buildeth her own house with her hands, buildeth the house with her own hands and pluck it down with her own hands. What does this actually mean, the wise and the foolish? Whatever we find to do with our hands, you know, there is a lot of theoretical um, uh, knowledge of the truth and not practicing of the truth itself. And so when the Bible says that uh, a wise woman buildeth her own house with her own hands, what does it mean? Uh, again, when you look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm building on something. In Ephesians chapter 5, we saw that the woman should be in submission to her husband. But there's something that she builds her house or her own home with her hands. Peter says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be warned by the conversation of uh, their wives. I'm reading from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Sorry, I didn't project it. This is it. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the words worn by the conversation of their wives. And so you may be in this marriage that is not working as you would wish it as a woman. The best way to salvage this is not by words every now and then. A wise woman buildeth her house with her own hands and she plucketh it down by her own hands. If she will lay her hands, if she will fold her hands and do nothing, that house is going to collapse. A woman who only is in the practice of only speaking and she doesn't contribute anything to the home with her hands, only will anger the husband. She has folded her hands 
and the only expectation is the husband to bring and all that stuff. Whatever little thing that she is even given, she doesn't have the wisdom of saving a little and do something with her own hands. She is always demanding of these things. And on the other side, the husband may not come at home and tell you, okay, my loving wife, I'm giving you this money, you may invest in this and this. But a wise woman will know that this house doesn't have this. And if the man doesn't have enough to invest in my talent, he, whatever he is bringing at home, I, I can see how I can minimize the expenditures in the house and then be able to save something and do with my hands. And this will motivate my husband. He may be a husband who doesn't understand things according to First Peter chapter 3. You cannot win him by every day talking about it. The only thing you can do is to win him without words. See what you can do with your own hands that will make this man even understand whatever I'm doing, I have a wife who is uh, really a backup to me. And so we find that sometimes the problems that are in marriage can be solved with a little wisdom from the wife's side or the man's side by looking at these things and uh, knowing that uh, I, I should do this and this. And so, um, and, and this is where we are connecting the talents and we are connecting the wise and the foolish that they took extra oil. That is, if the husband cannot be able to give everything, we know that Christ gives everything and uh, we are not uh, really doing a typology of this, but we are doing a contrast. A contrast is not an exact thing, but it's an ideal thing in this case. And so we are contrasting the plan of redemption and the marriage institution. How do they connect together thematically? And so we find that unlike Christ who gives everything to the church and that the church squanders it, you may end up in marriage where everything is not there. But as a wise wife, you may be able to work out uh, some things and be able to win out uh, win your husband and be able to contribute uh, something uh, to that uh, family. And so um, I, I pray that uh, we shall not be even on the part of the people who are married and the, the people who are waiting to be married, we shall not be part of the uh, foolish and that wife that destroys the house, but uh, we shall be part of the wise who are able to have that extra oil, and um, you look at the talents. This lady, uh, this uh, lady that is the church was given five talents. She reproduced ten. Another five, I mean, and they were ten. She, another one was given two, and she came up with uh, uh, with uh, other two, and they were four. But there's this one that was even given one, and she, she said, "I know how hard you are as the master." you reap where I did so. And then the master tell him, then you could have taken it to the bank where there's usury and I should have gotten something out of it. You knew that I reap where I don't, I, I, I didn't uh, so. But looking at uh, this uh, woman who is saying that you are reaping where I didn't so, it is a big lie because this woman has just seen that uh, the one who was given five has given back five, and then he was added more. So it's not like the master is not reaping where he did so. Sometimes the husband will do everything in the family and only what he will get at the end of the day is an appreciative wife who thinks that uh, uh, she saved this man from, uh, 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 from uh, despisement of the people. She is uh, a crown to him and without him, he cannot be anything. And you, so you find some kind of marriages where actually it is so hard, the women has made it so hard or the men has made it so hard to be in that marriage and uh, uh, it needs wisdom from God. And uh, I'd like us to end somewhere as we look at these things um, that uh, even while uh, the bridegroom is starting, we are to be found not idly. As uh, the man comes back to the house, he must not find uh, a woman who doesn't know how to arrange the house, a woman who is idling, and a woman who has not created an atmosphere that uh, 
uh, is humble enough to give happiness to the husband. And so in uh, the book of Proverbs 31, this is where I want us to end in the book of Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31. We have many things to cover, but uh, the book of Proverbs 31, we will just read this. I know it's a, a familiar place. We read together as we come to a close of this about the wise and the foolish, connecting it with the talents that uh, she was given. Um, from uh, verse 10, who can find a vicious woman for her price is far above the rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Now, it is interesting that whatever the husband brings it to the house, he knows that it will not go to a waste. So this husband has trusted in the wife fully. Let us not really blame our wives if we are not this man that puts fully trust in the wife. I know we shall say that so much is wanted of the wife, but it is much that is wanted from the husband that will make the wife be what she is supposed to be. If the husband lays a good ground, if she cultivates the soil better, then he will ha have a, a produce. If the husband cultivates or uh, 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 takes care of the soil, then the soil will take care of the husband. And so if you would want your wife to be reproductive, trust her. And after trusting her, then you will know that whatever you shall bring will not suffer any loss. She will do him good, not evil all the days of her life. Now, marriage is institution is a life of reciprocation, reciprocation, where actually uh, there is uh, complementing each other and uh, uh, looking at the strength of uh, one another and being able to work on them while also you work on their weakness so that you may improve. And uh, while yet we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While yet we were without strength, Christ died for us. And uh, even the husband, as you marry this wife, she may be weak in some things as even Christ took a weak church that had no strength. But with time, with perseverance and giving the gifts unto the church and uh, all this shielding her, actually the church will be presented as a bride having a linen, which is the righteousness of the saint. So also a man, there are some things that you may find in the woman that are not interesting you, but by continual uh, investing in her, she will do good and not evil all the days of her life. This is the redemption plan, and these are the thematic connections in this uh, thing, so that uh, 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 you nurture this plant so that it may be able to reproduce and give you so much. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You saw that the fool destroys her own house with her hands. But this one, the wise, is building the house with her own hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it's yet night and giveth me to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. She guarded her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. Remember the wise and the foolish, they did not carry, the foolish did not carry the extra oil, so their candle went out 
and it could not burn. But the wife, you are seeing her, her candle is burning. This wife is making sure that the home is lacking nothing. She is using all that she has been given to make sure that this house is in, um, uh, inhabitable. She laid her hands to the spindle and her hands holded the distaff. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Yeah, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 58, you will get the fulfillment of Proverbs 31 verse 20. She stretched out her hand to the poor. Yeah, she reached forth her hands to the needy. And in the family setup, I say you are a very unlucky man if you have a wife who is not welcoming, who doesn't consider the poor who doesn't consider your parents, who doesn't consider the people of your family and the people of the church. Pure religion, James 127, that is needed of God. Let us go there, James 127. Uh, James, James 127, we are told, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And so we are finding that this woman of Proverbs 3120 is doing the work of Isaiah 3120 at a family setup, as even the church should be doing the work of Isaiah 58 in the outside field. So I was saying it is so bad that you can get a wife who doesn't understand what is medical missionary and what it means to be a home missionary. And if uh, you are in such a marriage, it's not divorce or separation that will work. Teach what you can teach and leave the rest to the Lord. But um, if the wife cannot qualify for this, then uh, uh, we are in trouble. And uh, we understand that Sister White was told that um, uh, in her marriage, she has to be a home missionary. She had to take in orphans and she has to take care of the widows and so on. And the other women were to learn from her. And she said that what I'm doing, other women can learn to do also in their household. And so she was an example to other married women. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. This woman knows how to teach dress reform in the house. The spiritual things are not only left to the man, but also she is taking care of the spiritual things in her household. And uh, dress is an index of the heart. And so the way she dresses her family, the way she admonishes them to, to present themselves before the people will show if this woman is wise or if uh, she is a foolish woman. She maketh her covering of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. And so don't think that this man is just lazy and he sits at the gates. No, we have been told from the beginning that the husband doth trust in this woman. And trust does just not mean a mere consent of words. But if you trust somebody, you will give them everything they need, if it is possible unto you, or you will make them uh, have a life that uh, is almost ideal to what should be. And so uh, this man is not just a get sitter doing nothing while the wife is doing everything. This man is known in the gates, not that because he sits at the gate, but because when he goes into the field, uh, the people also commend him for what he is doing for the wife because they also see that um, the wife is not a burden to the husband. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. And this is about the second coming. Uh, when everything has ended, we shall be with the father forever. And uh, uh, this woman will also enjoy her marriage because everything is go going according to the plan of marriage institution. She opened her mouth with wisdom. She is not a talkative woman and only spending time in idle talks in the village. No, she opened her mouth. This is a woman that the village women also comes to get their teachings from. 
when she gathers other women, they are going to leave the house when they are blessed and not just having stories on how to break their own houses. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. So bad that you can find that you are married to an idle person or an idle man. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, lastly, this is marvelous. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Who is giving her the fruits of the hands? The man himself, because we understand that the, 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 the gift of the Holy Spirit comes from Jesus Christ to the church and that the fruit therein comes from the gift of the Holy Spirit or the, 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 the Holy Spirit uh, itself, which is the Spirit of Christ. And so this man is giving unto this lady what whatsoever that can make her reproduce. And after doing that, let her own works praise her in the gates. So while the man, the man was praised, being praised at the gates, never think that the woman was not being praised. The man is being praised for what he has done for the lady. And when he is being praised at the gates, also the lady is being praised at the gates. This is an ideal family. And this is the kind of marriage institution that the Lord wants for us. And so the Lord has set up his church upon the earth and he's doing everything and giving it all the capabilities according to the potentials they have so that people may say, what a wise nation is this? What a wise church is this? And what of their God? The people will say, oh, what a wise people that have a wise God. And so as God is praised, also the church is praised. And we, we are told that um, uh, let your light so shine and people see your good works that they may praise the Father which art in heaven. That is the book of Matthew chapter 5. And so let women their light shine so that their husband, they may be a crown to their husband. And when he's praised at the gates, they are also praised. I hope that you are blessed and I hope that the Lord will continue revealing these things unto us. And um, uh, as we continue studying, we shall continue learning what is the ideal marriage and how it connects the thematic connection between this ideal marriage and the redemption plan. Otherwise, I want us to close with a word of uh, prayer. Let us um, pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you. We, we praise you because, Lord, you are in the business of making us uh, wise virgins and not foolish virgins. And so open our ears, open our eyes, and open our understanding, dear Father, that we may be able to be that church, that bride that will be presented before you, a holy bride without spot and blemish. We can only come to uh, understanding this the way we deal with our marriages, Heavenly Father, because you say this is a great mystery and it's between a husband and a wife. Whatever things that we cannot understand and we cannot articulate better and bring to your children, may you bring the understanding because you have said, if anyone lacks wisdom, you shall give liberally unto them. And Lord, we know that uh, not a single man understands things the way they should be understood, but you give different inspiration to different people so that we may have a harmonious knowledge of the truth. And so thank you for hearkening unto our prayer. We know that uh, you will continue are opening thyself unto us. And Lord, help us to give our hearts unto thee that uh, at the end of the day, we may not be ashamed of uh, being called your children and we be cast away. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for your children. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray of these things. Amen.